Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, I'm coming back again with another awesome mech review, but tonight, something very special. You're only going to get it here, it's a sneak peek guys, at two mechs that are going to be featured in the upcoming Ill Clan Volume 6 Recognition Guide, slated to drop at the end of this month. So you're getting this video several weeks in advance of what's going to be in the recognition guide. Very cool. A special thanks to Ray and Joe Heidler over at Catalyst Game Lab. So guys, thank you very much for giving us this sneak peek here uh, that we can share out with all the Battletech fans out there. So what are we looking at tonight, guys? Well, we've got a fan favorite, the Marauder. Uh, who doesn't love the Marauder? Uh, if you don't, you should, because it's the coolest. Uh, we're looking at two variants tonight. The first one is the 7R. So Joe describes this variant as, you know, just sort of a standard path upgrade coming out of the wake of the Jihad. It's got a couple of ER PPCs, a light Gauss rifle, and a pair of medium X pulse lasers. Um, it's got terrific armor. It's got your standard Marauder speed. It's got double heat sinks. Excited to see how this one performs in Battleytics. And then we've got the 11D. This is like madness. This is just insanity. It's mixed tech, two clan ER PPCs, a silver bullet Gauss rifle, two medium X pulse lasers, double heat sinks, XL gyro, endo composite structure. I don't even know. It's got so much crazy tech on it. Uh, this one is a 3150 special. So this is basically all the cutting edge stuff that you would expect uh, in that ill clan error so this one very excited to see now it's not cheap it's i think over 2300 bv we're going to take a look at it and we'll see how it stacks up you know those costly mechs sometimes don't always pan out but got a good feeling about this one mainly because it's a marauder but we'll see so guys once again thank you to ray and joe over at catalyst game labs guys really appreciate this looking forward to doing more and uh, for all you subscribers and BattleTech fans out there don't forget to head over and pick up a copy of this. You can get it at Drive Through RPG. I'll put a link up to that in just a minute, but guys, stay tuned. The Battleytics Mech Review coming right up. All right, guys, let's get this thing started. This is exciting, brand new, never before seen juicy battle mechs. Uh, so the first one we're going to start with here is the Marauder 7R. Uh, so this, uh, as again, described by our friends over at Catalyst, uh, sort of a late era, you know, after the Jihad, uh, rolling into the Dark Age era and beyond. Uh, so I sort of estimated around 3080, 3085, maybe uh, for an inception date for this particular design. Uh, standard Marauder, 75 tons, inner sphere heavy, the battle value, 1,000 832 so not inexpensive uh you know it's on par with a you know 3025 era atlas for example so it is packing some uh, some delicious technology there um movement we talked about the standard uh four six move for marauder um the heat dissipation is packing 15 double heat sinks uh, so it has a very healthy dissipation now it does have an XL fusion engine. You all know how I feel about that, uh, and ferrofibrous armor. So we'll see how this thing does in the survivability. You know those XL fusion engines on the inner sphere side, uh, very fragile. But it is packing 12 and a half tons of ferrofibrous. That's almost 100% armor coverage. 224 pips. It's a ton. And if you look at the armor diagram in the center there, you can see. I mean, this thing is loaded to the gills. Uh, just a little shy on the arms and legs, but those torsos are packed out uh, at max. So very good armor distribution there. Now, in terms of the weapon array, uh, it does have the light gauss in the right torso, two ER PPCs, and a pair of medium X pulse. This mech also has a Guardian ECM suite. Um, as a veteran of multiplayer Mech Warrior 4, I, uh, I just absolutely love ECM. Any kind of countermeasures uh, you can put on a mech, uh, it's just phenomenal. So uh, awesome for also when we play on the DFA side, um, we use the, uh, the visibility rules, right? With the blip counters and all of these things, ECM plays such a great role. Uh, also battlefield intelligence and all of these types of things. So really cool to have ECM on a mech like this, especially they can hit so far out. 
Uh, it's a deadly combination. Anyway, packing ammo in the center torso. Remember that ammo is inert. The Gauss rifle itself is what explodes. I believe on a light Gauss, it's a 16 point explosion. So um, that is also surrounded by a case two uh, in the right torso. So if that Gauss rifle gets hit, you're basically, you know, it's blowing out the backside, so it's not too bad. Okay, so this next one, uh, the 11D. This is a Ill Clan Era 3150 Plus Special. This thing is awesome, in my opinion. Battle value of 2263, so it was a little high in the in the intro. It's actually only 2263, still ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> still very expensive, but uh, you'll see why, guys. This is uh, this is this is quite a fine piece of machinery. Uh, it is a 4.6 movement profile, no jump capabilities, uh, and it has a heat dissipation of 34 points per turn. So it's 17 double heat sinks. Now, it's packing all sorts of fun technology. It's got the XL Fusion engine. It's got an XL Gyro, uh, which doesn't really do much except for take up the extra two critical slots in your center torso, which in my opinion for a mech of this size is a pretty good trade-off. Um, it's got a composite structure so a composite structure guys it's uh it's it's a little complicated um <clears throat> it's not that complicated but basically what happens is any damage that hits the internal structure is doubled however if that damage spills over into another section uh that doubling goes away so it's a little bit of of a record keeping thing i mean honestly it, i think it would almost be the same as if you have the internal structure everywhere um but regardless it's got that in there. That's some pretty fancy stuff. And it's got 14 tons of standard armor. So this also happens to be the exact same armor coverage, 224 pips as the Marauder 7R, 97% coverage, exact same distribution, uh, which is beautiful. You know, I mean, this is exactly how I would set up my armor if I were making a mech from scratch. So it's got, again, full torsos, a little bit off on the arms, a little bit off on the legs, really well done there. Weapons. So mixed tech madness, guys. This thing has the Slayers of Worlds. This has two clan ERP PCs, the Decapitators. Uh, they're just absolutely brutal. Crazy range, 15 points of damage. Um, you know, no ammo to speak of. Yes, they build up a lot of heat, but remember this thing's got 34 double heat sinks. It also has a silver bullet Gauss rifle. So this is just uh, basically an LBX-15 on cluster, right? Ba-boom, fires 15 one-point rounds. Uh, so when you've got these ERP PCs boring holes in things and you're just blasting this, this hypersonic buckshot across the battlefield, you're generating crits like a monster. And we're gonna see that when we get into the lethality. Um, Pair of medium X pulse lasers rounds everything out. Now this one does not have any electronics, no ECM, no beagle probes. Um, it's just packing its ammo, which is in two locations. It's got a ton in the head uh, and a ton in the right torso. Again, the ammo is inert. The uh, the Gauss rifle itself is what explodes, and once again, that side torso, that right torso, protected by a case two. Now, so excited. Let's get into the offensive analysis. These are some really big numbers. Uh, the, the 11D, as expected, is topping the charts. Um, let's go through it. I do want to preface by saying the Marauder 11D does more optimized ACD than the infamous Warhawk. Just throwing it out there. So the baseline benchmarking on these things is tremendous. Uh, 206 points of damage on the 7R. 361 points of damage over 12 turns. Just let that marinate for a moment for the 11D. Let's look at the red line. Uh, so you can see these things both build up a ton of heat. The, um, the 7R actually can build up heat way more aggressively uh, than the 11D, which I was actually surprised about. But remember, the Inner Sphere ERPPC and the Clan ERPPC build up the same amount of heat. So just firing two of those ERPPCs fully saturates the 7R, uh, whereas the 11D can still hammer out that Silver Bullet Gauss and has really no adverse effects until the Medium X-Pulse come into play at, uh, at turn seven, as you can see. So um, the one thing we learned from this 
even with the trigger down, these mechs can do a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, the 11D as well, really just laying down tons of uh, tons of pain, uh, and and really only takes a heat penalty once those medium X pulse come into play. But again, heat is the currency for damage, gives us an opportunity to optimize. So where did it all shake out? Uh, well, with a little bit of tweaking, what we were able to do is increase both of these mechs by about three percent. So the final optimized average calculated damage for the 7R was 212, and for the 11D, it was 372.7. That is a scorchingly high number. Uh, that one might actually be, I'd have to go to the database, that might actually be the most destructive mech we have reviewed on the channel. Joe, congratulations. I mean, this thing is just brutal. So let's take a look at the lethality, and then we'll get into some of the other stuff. Okay, so the first thing I notice here is the kill curve. Uh, the the 11D is getting kills almost immediately, and um, you know hits its first inflection point on like turn four, where that really starts to climb. That curve starts to climb pretty aggressively. The 7R trails it by a few turns. They both generally end up being at the same place, around 100% kill factor. Uh, but the <laughs> the 11D is basically there uh, in, in you know in like eight turns. So let's break it down. One thing that really jumped out uh, when you compare the two pie charts: look at the number of engine kills on the 11D. 17.6%. I want to point out the fact that this is a javelin. So what this shows me is that. You're, ba you're basically able to deliver a PPC shot to the center torso, and you're able to buckshot. You know, you, you roll a good number, you get a good confirmation on the clusters, right? You get maybe, maybe 10 of the 15 hitting. You're likely going to get a few in the CT. You're generating criticals. That's basically what you're seeing here. And you'll notice if you go to the critical hits, 3.3 for the 7R, 5.6 for the 11D. Now, I do want to say the 7R are very respectable. Um, it's got 7.9 damage per hit, so very good if you're looking for a lot of direct damage. The Silver Bullet Gauss is um, it's not, it's only, it's only doing buckshot, right? You only do one point at a time. So you can see the damage per hit on the 11D down to 2.3. Time to kill on these guys, 8.2 on the 7R, 6.1 on the 11D. It's hard. The 7R is such a good mech, but the 11D is unbelievable so far. Um, it's just that it's that mixed tech magic. 8.2 time to kill is definitely to the to the right of the bell curve. You know, our average time, you know, across all mechs is around 10 turns, 11 turns. So 8.2 is still a very, very respectable number. Um, but 6.1 is is just unheard of. Um, you know, and this is this is including again, you know, hitting, landing the hits in the right place, finishing this mech off. I mean, just being able to slag a mech like this in six turns before your medium X pulse are even in range, right? I mean, this thing is killing the javelin before it's, you know, it's backup weapons are basically in play. It's pretty impressive. But again, that is the power of the Clan ER PPC. And that, of course, is why uh, this thing probably costs as much as it does. A 7R, remember, only 1832 BV, I say only, but comparatively, you know, about 400 BV cheaper. Um, so we're going to have to see how these things shake out. Now, Defensive is coming up next, guys. I will say this. That composite structure could be an Achilles heel for this 11D. Let's find out. All right, so here it is. Survivability curve. Survey says it's not so bad. Uh, these things are relatively close within 10% of each other. That 7R, definitely more survivable. It hangs in there longer. The 11D does see some drop off around turn seven, turn eight. You can see those lines separating just a bit there, but it's honestly not as bad as I expected. Um, I thought with that composite structure, this thing would definitely be seeing, um, you know, in the 50, 50 percentile, but it is so well armored that it's just, it's very difficult to get into that internal structure. Those side torsos and that CT completely packed out. Um, I think it's 35 pips on the, uh, on the CT there. Um, so, you know, looking at the death analysis, the majority of deaths for both of these mechs come from engine kills. 24% on the 11D, that's very high. 19.2% destruction by engine death on the 7R. 
Um, and you know, in total here, you know, what we're looking at is, is um, again, the inverse of survivability, 25.9% of the deaths um, for, the, for the Marauder 7R and 35.3% um, for the 11D. So basically one third, a little more than one third of the uh, 11D's deaths are coming from engine and, and about the same for the, uh, for the 7R, just a little bit higher again, because you know, when you're hitting that structure, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, this thing is basically crumpling a lot faster. So if you destroy a side torso sooner on the 11D, obviously you're getting that engine kill. Um, as far as ammo goes, so it doesn't have any live ammo. It just has the silver bullet gauss on the 11D, which is a 20 point internal critical and a 16 point internal critical for the light gauss rifle. Both of those protected by case two. So even, even if you destroy it, um, it's not like a standard case where you're going to lose the engine. You're basically taking uh, maybe a point of internal structure damage. It's, uh, it's very survivable. So overall, these things had 0%. They never died in the simulation from a Gauss rifle explosion, which is pretty good. Speaks to the power of Case 2. Uh, so great job for the engineers for finally figuring that one out. Um, now, moving on, let's take a look at, at mobility, uh, and we'll see if there are any major differences there. Okay, so on the uh, mobility side here, what we see is very similar numbers. Again, both of these things are running at six inches, six hexes, so they're getting a plus two to start. It degrades down to about a plus 1.6, plus 1.5 average, um, you know, target mod there. So, you know, not bad overall. Um, you know, they're taking some motive hits. It's not exorbitantly high. It's a little bit higher on the 11D. Um, and that is typically because, again, you're seeing leg loss sooner uh, because, you know, again, it's essentially got half as much internal structure to play with or you're taking twice as much damage to it, however you want to look at it. Uh, so that is effectively why you're seeing um, some more um, motive uh, hits, you know, again, whether it's a leg actuator, a hip hit, or just the leg entirely blown off, that's all factored in there. So um, overall, mobility very similar. The, uh, the 7R edging it out just a little bit here, but really not much uh, to talk about in terms, of, uh, in terms of their mobility. Okay, and the one I've been waiting for, uh, the efficiency analysis. And it, it is as I had expected, uh, it's unbelievable. So despite the reduction in survivability, the 11D just does so much, so much damage. Uh, it, is, it is able to blow the doors off here uh, it is it is actually over a 10, but really, if you look at the gunnery sensitivity analysis, the actual efficiency calculation comes out to 10.49, which is which is unbelievable for the 11D. And the 7R, very respectable at 7.54. This is where you want most of your heavy and assault mechs to be. Um, at a you know at a minimum, this is a good buy. This is where like your Zeus's are, where some of your other Marauders are. This is where things I believe like the Timberwolf uh, ended up landing. So you know 7.54, really solid. I think that's an excellent buy on the 7R. Um, now looking a little bit at the damage loss up in the top right there, I'm sort of jumping around. Um, both of these mechs very similar. We always talk about 10% being the magic number, and both of these guys hit that. You know, um, the 7R exceeding it a little bit uh, at 9%, and the uh, the 11D at uh, at 10.8%. So when you look at the gain over baseline, which again, both of these mechs were around a 3% gain when we optimized, and then you factor in the damage loss of about 9% each, your net change is 6.2% um, loss from baseline. You know, when you feel this in a, in a sort of a real game scenario, when you're factoring in survivability and all of these things, net loss of 6.2% on the Marauder 7R, so the effective ACD is 193.3. On the Marauder 11D, the net loss, the net change is 7.9%. So, you know, from baseline, reducing the damage 7.9%, and your effective ACD sitting at 332.5. It's incredible. Uh, so it's basically churning out, again, over 12 turns, <laughs> 330 points of damage. You could slag uh, multiple assault mechs with that. Um, you know, I mean, I think the Atlas has, what, 304 pips? 
So even if you manage to hit every single location, you could still slag the armor and have some left over. I mean, considering any any bit of decent luck, you're you're basically able to destroy multiple assault mechs with this thing, a well armored assault mechs, which is it's unbelievable to me. Um, and for the cost, 2263, it's mind-bogglingly good. So, what do we see here on gunnery sensitivity? Well, the 7R not so great it's a 0.5 a 0.454 actually um it just didn't really have a hard slope and and i you know as i look at it um i think it has nothing to do with the fact that you're not going to see a return on investment if you put a better pilot in you're just not going to see as much um it does a lot of damage in the backfield for sure um you know it does a lot of damage in close you can see though that that effective benchmark up at the top it really climbs substantially when you get into that nine inch, seven inch range, right? When those medium X pulse come into play. The Marauder 11D on the other hand, those Clan ER PPCs, they do so much damage. Uh, the range is better, they're doing more sooner. And so it's got a little bit of a better sensitivity. Not by much, 0.9 is nothing to write home about. You know, when we think about really good sensitivity, it's like 0 0.7, 0 0.75 higher, right? So 0 0.5, 0 0.4, that's about what you see on most mechs. Um, what's interesting to note though, is with a Gunnery Zero Pilot, this Marauder 11D is actually at 11.09 at efficiency, which is, you know, very high. Um, you know, I think the only mechs that are, that are higher than this from an efficiency perspective, and I'd have to go back and look, uh, I think the Longbow uh, 7Q and then the, the Annihilator 1E uh, because they're just incredible bang for their buck and you can just, you know, I think the, the Annihilator is like 1,600 points, so they're very cheap. Um, so you get a lot of efficiency out of them, but this thing is extremely close and probably more practical. So, excellent mech. Uh, both of these things, excellent mechs. The 11D, just mind-bogglingly good. Let's take a look at the roll analysis, the threats, Let's think about where we would field these things and how we would play them. Okay, so we're going to start with the 7R, um, taking a look at the threat. So this thing stays pretty cool up until about 9 inches. Once you get to 9 inches, that's when you can start building up a ton of heat. You can actually build up um, 14 points of heat with a trigger pull. That's a lot. Um, you know, other than that, you know, you're only building up a few points of heat, which is which is sustainable. Um, you know, you can get, get on and off the PPCs. Now, again, firing both of those inner sphere ER PPCs fully saturates the mech when it's standing still, which is not ideal. It reminds me of like the old school Warhammer, uh, you know, where it has 20 heat sinks and two PPCs. It's like, it's just... Ah, you, you'd you rather strip some other things and just add one or two more heat sinks um, so that you could get it, you know, just get it up above that threshold so you could move and shoot. I digress. Where do I want to play this? Let's look at the thread envelope. So the thread envelope, very good. The one thing I love about the Marauders is the guns mounted on the arms. It's a boon and a, it's a, boon and a curse. If you lose the arm, you lose the weapon, but you have incredible arc of fire. You can do some really cool things with it. Um, you know, you can torso to a shoot behind you, do all sorts of stuff like that. So you really technically have, if you are crafty, a good 360 degree arc of fire. You can pretty much hit anywhere on the board as long as you're torso twisting. So anyway, let's talk about some key metrics and then we'll talk about rolls. So the peak zero heat ACD is 25.8. That means that's the white bars on the chart. So if I decide I don't want to build up any heat, what, what, what can I do? And the best I can do is 25.8 at three inches. And again, that's average calculated damage. That's factoring in your two hit roll, you know, the probability that you're likely to hit with a specific weapon, right? All that's multiplied in there, 25.8. It's pretty darn good. Like if on average you're drilling people for 25 and a half points of damage at three inches, it's a lot of damage. Um, and it looks like that damage is consistent everywhere from about six inches to three inches, a little bit higher at three, but... Um, the peak ACD is just a little bit higher by about nine points, also at three inches, um, and that's if if you alpha strike. So you're really not getting a whole lot out of alpha striking. Again, you're firing those X-Pulse lasers, which are great, but they're so hot. They build up so much heat. I love the extra three inches of range, you know, and the hit modifier uh, that's, that's very favorable, but... You know, the heat is just an absolute killer if you don't have the heat sinks to sustain it. And this is a hot mech. It's like 
classic Marauder. Um, and so, you know, you're not going to see a lot from uh, Alpha Striking. Really, I think those X-Pulse lasers should be used when you want to back off the PPCs and fire something a half a degree cooler. Um, you know, you can do that. So anyway, it can hit for a 40 point alpha strike at all the way at nine inches. That's when the, those X pulse come into range. But again, you really want to wait until you hit that six inch mark. You're at medium range or even better yet, short range um, to, to let loose on them. But, you know, 40 point alpha strike is substantial. I mean, if you hit with everything, it is a lot of direct fire. You can get very lucky. You can hit the same spot. You can blow things to smithereens. So lots of good stuff here. I would play this mech in three different roles. The first one is a defender. Um, I think it's tough. 75% survival rate is nothing to scoff at. It's got case two. It's going to be hard to get a lucky shot and take it out. You know, it is, uh, it is again, packed to the gills with armor. It's about as tough as a 75 ton mech really could be, um, unless it's faster. The engine, it does, uh, it does hurt it. Those XL engines really are an Achilles heel on these inner sphere mechs, but I still think it's tough enough to play a defender role. So the second one is fire support. Light Gauss is great. Again, it's got heat saturation problems with the ER PPCs, but I think a good pilot can overcome that, can play it smart. You can utilize terrain, water, and other things, or, you know, you can go PPC. Uh, you can you basically alpha strike a few turns and then lay off one of the PPCs. You'll cool right off, you know, so you can kind of engage in a specific firing pattern like that. Um, I think it can play the role very well. It's, you know, again, it's doing uh, a substantial amount, uh, I believe was a 28 points of damage of direct fire um, all the way out at maybe, you know, starting at 23 inches. I believe the light gauss is 25 inches or hexes, uh, if that's your sort of thing. Uh, so very, very capable mech in the fire support role. Lastly would be frontline. I think, again, this mech can survive the onslaught. It can take point. It can, it can shield some of your weaker mechs. There's really no ammo on board, um, you know, the, the, the Gauss rifle again cased. Um, and so, you know, I think you can afford to be a little bit aggressive with this thing. And it's a force to be reckoned with. People can't ignore it. They're going to want to pressure it. They're going to want to force you to overheat and keep your rate of fire up. Get the mech into nine inches, then into six inches. Get up in their face. There is no minimum range. You're good to go. So, you know, I mean, there is on the light Gauss, but whatever. Now, one final thought on this mech. Don't let the 11D overshadow how good this mech is. If you're looking for something, you know, in that Republic era or, you know, in that, you know, again, right at the end of the Jihad era, this is a great mech. Uh, I think this is a very, very solid buy. So that said, let's look at the Destroyer of Worlds, the 11D. Woo! So many bars. Uh, so much happening here. So this thing is just, uh, it's disgusting. Uh, I, I continue to marvel at its, and at its disgustingness. Uh, so it's basically got um, a zero heat ACD of 38.8 damage at seven inches. That's really good. That's, you know, that's like, I don't want to build up any heat. What can I shoot and how much damage am I likely to do on average? I mean, you get the seven inches of things doing 38.8 damage. That's craziness. It's craziness. Um, it, it's peak ACD is at three inches. Obviously when those X pulse get into short range, um, at seven, I, I believe is when the ER PPCs get into short range. So 50.4 damage and your alpha strike potential is 57 at nine inches. So as soon as again, the X pulse come into range. Wow. And you're building up 10 points of heat. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's still a lot. Uh, but again, you know, you have 34 double heat sinks, very easy to shoot. You're taking on a double movement penalty and a firing penalty. I think a double movement penalty. Check my heat chart. Yeah, I was right. So you take on minus two to movement. Uh, you're going to take on plus one to shooting. But again, you've just potentially dealt up to 57 points of damage. So you have that guy that decides, I'm going to stand still to get a better chance to hit you. And you just nuke him at nine inches. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 57 points is going to hurt. Um, especially if he's got some holes in him, because again, that silver bullet is going to just find the criticals. It's going to do it. Um, and the other great thing about it is, you know, headshots, headshots, consciousness checks, headshots, consciousness checks. I mean, this thing is, again, the silver bullet, it's, it's again, it's like the LBX-10, the LBX-20. These things are crit finders, very, very dangerous weapons when used correctly. All right, 
Let's talk about the threat envelope. So it does have less range than its counterpart. Um, you know, that light, again, that light gauss really goes uh, far, you know, 20, 25 inches, I think we said. Um, so this is a little bit less range, but in terms of arcs of fire, it's basically identical. That ERPPC does go out a little bit further. Um, so overall, I think it's a very effective um, distribution of the weaponry. Again, you can torso twist, you can look behind you with an arm if you swing it back out. So you have basically 360 degree arc of fire. Again, you know, with those big arm mounted PPCs like you get on a Warhammer or Marauder, you know, uh, these big gun weapons on the arms, you know, very, very effective if you use them um, the way they're intended to be used. So let's take a look at rolls. So this one's a little bit different. Um, I do not think this one would be a good defender. I think that, you know, it does have that lower survivability. It is a little bit, um, you know, the, the cardboard internal structure, as I'll call it. So, you know, you got to be careful about how you use this thing. First and foremost, I would make this mech a fire support mech. I mean, forget the medium X pulse. They're like backup weapons. You know, if something closes on you like a locust and you can, you can use the, the firing uh, modifier, right? You know, they're more likely to hit and all this other stuff. You know, blow up the light mechs with that that are harassing your fire support line. Meanwhile, turn those nasty big guns on your target I mean, again, it's a decapitator, it's a crit finder. It is so good in that fire support role. Um, that's the first place I would play it. The second thing I would do with this is the total opposite, which is a brawling uh, style mech. Now, again, very, uh, you know, very concerning that it does have that composite internal structure, but it does have a lot of armor. So what I would recommend is don't put it in a brawl with like a king crab or something with, you know, like like a pair of demolisher tanks. Like that would be a bad idea. But, you know, if you can get this thing in close or you're in an urban fight or, um, you know, you're unexpectedly at a, at a position where tactically you can push forward and get this mech in close, I would say don't be afraid to do it. Remember, the clan ER PPCs have no minimum range. Um, the, 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 silver, uh, the, yeah, the silver bullets got like, I think a minimum range of two, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, so that's like negligible. And then the medium expulse obviously do not have a minimum range. So you can get this thing in close and you're just, you're, you're doing a ton of damage. Again, you've got that 57 point alpha strike capability, just very, very good. So um, it will die quickly, quicker, um, you know, than, than some big assaults, but it can definitely get in there. I would say play this thing as a brawler if it's got some big brothers and sisters on the field with it. Um, you know, if maybe you've got a king crab or you've got something else that's a fire magnet, this is a great mech to pair with it for an in-fight. Um, but that would probably be the, you know, like my third choice. I think first choice is fire support, third choice is brawler. My second sort of in the middle choice is a second line mech. So what do I mean by that? Second line means um, you're hanging out in the back <clears throat> with your fire support line. You're delivering damage. Once you start seeing the scales tip, or once you start seeing enough of your enemy, um, you know, being depleted, you've know, got enough holes in their armor that you feel like you can close in, or they're fixated on some other targets, or there's an opportunity where, you know, there's isolated line of sight and you can close in this thing. This is, this is the mech to do that with. Um, it's not particularly fast, but it's not particularly slow either. Um, when I think of second line mechs, I also think of things like the catapult. You know, it's got a bunch of medium lasers and it's got a pair of LRM-15s. You know, um, there's really nothing in between. You just hang back until your LRM hoppers run dry, and then you close in and get those four medium lasers in play. This is like the same type of idea. You're going to hang back. You're going to use that silver bullet. You're going to use those ERPCs. You're going to poke holes in things, and when they're sufficiently messed up, that's when you close in, right? And that's when you go in and you get your X-Pulse into play, and you finish off your prey. Um, so... This thing can be used in a variety of ways. Again, my number one, I think, for this would be just a direct fire support mech. It's just absolutely devastating. Um, again, poking the holes uh, with the big PPCs, the clan ER PPCs on this inner sphere mech. It's blasphemy, I tell you. Uh, and then the the silver bullet gauss. Uh, again, finding all those critical hits. Um, you know, very, very deadly combination, uh, as the simulator has proven to us here. So... Guys, that's it. It's all I've got, uh, unfortunately, for now, on these amazing uh, mechs. Absolutely, just such a cool opportunity to get a sneak peek into the Ill Clan Volume 6, uh, the recognition guys. Um, guys, if you have not downloaded these, if you've not gotten these from Drive-Thru RPG, 
I highly recommend it. They're so inexpensive and they've been dropping them in little chunks, right? So you can kind of buy them up. Um, I believe volume five is dropping very soon. These Marauders are in volume six, which is dropping closer to the end of the month. So very, very cool stuff. And it just is a preview into what's coming for Battletech. Uh, and it has all of our favorite mechs in there. Um, I saw one with a Zeus floating around that I need to get my hands on. Um, so I, I need to I need to get get on top of that. Um, speaking of getting mechs, guys, if you want to get yourself a Marauder, head on over to Ares Games and Minis. He stocks all of the Ironwind medals. Um, there are some phenomenal Marauder sculpts out there. All the different ones. Obviously, this mech has gone through several uh, iterations, courtesy of the. Uh, seen, unseen, reseen stuff. <laughs> so a few different variants of uh, of the Marauder are out there to suit your taste. And of course, it's in the Kickstarter and it's in Wave 1. And I cannot wait because not only am I getting uh, the standard one that comes in, in one of the Inner Sphere Lances, but also um, there's a special character Marauder as well, um, I believe, which I'm, I'm very excited to get my hands on. And you can actually get those over at Ares Games and Minis as well. Uh, you know, as soon as those are available for retail, uh, I talked to Derek just the other day and he will have them in stock for us. So very exciting stuff. Um, final note, guys, again, don't forget to pick up your copy of the Ill Clan recognition guides over at Drive Through RPG. Thank you again to Ray, Arastia, and Joe uh, over at Catalyst Game Labs. Guys, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, and, you know, from, from I think all of the Battletech fan base for this sneak peek uh, into this exciting uh, next edition of the, uh, of the recognition guides here. So, don't forget to subscribe. 50% of you guys are watching and enjoying this delightful Battletech content and have not subscribed. So please do so. It's the number one way you can help out the channel. Uh, and we really, of course, appreciate when you guys do that. So if you have not subscribed, please do so. Check us out on our website, www.dfawargaming.com. Check out these battle mechs and a whole lot more on www.battlelytics.com. You can just select from a menu. There's a whole bunch of mechs. Every single mech in the Wave 1 Kickstarter is there. So guys, you don't you definitely want to know which mechs uh, you're going to want to field. Lots of different variants for each, so very cool. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got. So guys, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.